We are back again for another Nerdly Out Loud Romford Roundtable where we have a, another cast and crew from the movie And I. And uh, this is quite a special one for me, Bradley, because uh, we get to talk about one of your projects. It's very kind. And how cool was it to see And I up on the big screen? It was absolutely super cool. It was um, actually quite emotional. Um, I imagine. Yeah, it was, really. I mean, it's actually been, what, four, five months since we absolutely completed it. Um, so you can kind of detach yourself, you know, as writer-director. You're so close when you're making it. But after that period of time, I've kind of stepped away from it and feel, feel that it's all about project. It was always all about project, you know, cinematographer, sound, editor, everything. But even more so now. So I can view it not as my little baby so much, you know, that's, that's how you feel when you're making it. But yeah, it's great. Fantastic. And, and is that a feeling since you've, you've finished it and now you've got it on the screen, it's like, let's just give it to everyone. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. You just want to share it, you know, and, and you hope, you hope in your heart that even if it moves somebody, just makes somebody think in some way, moves them, um, that's what you're hoping for, isn't it? You're hoping Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I have to say, because obviously when we do the, the selections and everything, we only, re I, well, I only really watch it on a laptop. I'm pretty sure you probably watch it on a massive big screen and all that, but to see and I on the big screen, it just looked spectacular. It looked fantastic. It did look great. And that's um, pretty much all down to our cinematographer, Daniel Keeble, who did an amazing job. Yeah, yeah it did look And great. he's got a couple in the festival this year as He's well. got two, yeah, he's got <laughs> one to, uh, later as well, yeah. Nice, nice. So I know we dealt with it in the Q&A, but let, let's delve into it a little bit more. Where, where did this plot come from, the story come from, the idea come from? You've got your writer here as well, so hopefully she'll be able to give us some, some insight on that as well. But where, because it, it's a bit mad. So where did it come from? It, it is a bit mad, and um, but he's not. He's not? He's no, not. he has a mental illness called yeah, yeah, dissociative definitely. identity disorder. Um, it is a bit wacky, and it, it comes from a script that's got multiple different stories all running at the same time, but as my mic just, yeah, it's, it's all right, it's come back. Um, so these multiple stories are all running simultaneously, but have tenuous links between them. Um, so yeah, we're really excited. We, Julia and I wrote that quite a long time ago, so it's gone through many rewrites. Um, we picked those characters out, and this is not an exact version of what happens in the feature, but certainly there's lots of similarities. So, do you want me to pass it to Julia and then yeah, pass, give her a take on it? Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the script we wrote originally is um, a little bit of a sort of magnolia type of oh, storyline where there's lots of interlocking, intertwining story strands. And this was one that we decided would work really well as a standalone short. Um, and it's possible we'll go back and make another one of those story strands um, into a short as well. But Brad and I, work, we've worked on many scripts together and we're working on some more. So um, we're shooting one this summer, which mm -hmm. we're really looking forward to, which is quite different from this one. And I'll be getting my first directing credit on that, so I'm going to be quite excited about that one. And how does the, the collaboration work between you guys? Obviously, like, writer, director and everything like that. How, what's the collaboration process? Um, certainly on this, um, I was kind of behind the scenes learning a bit about directing. I've, I've directed very briefly before but I think Brad and I work really well together because he's very good on the technical side of things particularly and I'm quite good on the sort of visuals I used to work in sort of fashion I've worked on film sets um, as a script supervisor so I'm very keen on sort of how things look and being very particular about that. So how, how does that work for, for an actor like yourself? dealing with someone who's very particular and dealing with all the different characters you've got there. and Because you, you said in that Q&A that you haven't acted, what was it, 17 yeah, years? 17 years. 17 That's years. crazy to then turn that performance in after 17 yeah. years. I mean, I, I was an actor for about 17 years before that as well. Right. So I have a background in, in serious acting. But yeah, it, it's been a long time. And it was, um, it was a journey that was quite terrifying to go on. Considering the part, it was very difficult to learn because there are four characters, so there isn't a through line. I, I always look for a through line where the character begins and the character ends, but it was, it was broken because 
this guy has four different personalities that we've mm -hmm. seen. It. So it's really, really difficult to, to, to learn for a start. But yeah, when we, 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 we are, we're partners in real life. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, um, yeah, me taking kind of instruction from you, I, I trust your opinion. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, we're professional about it. And was there ever a sense of, give me some better lines, give me some better lines? Um, there was, there was once. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> did you, because um, obviously, yeah, what did you say there? It was DID? D yeah. 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 Did you do much research into that when you were trying to hone in onto the character? Yeah, I, I, I had to because I didn't know much about it. And also, I like to work when I actually got. I, the research is something that I kind of own. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to I went to Split to the film Split with James McAvoy, which it, I didn't do it for me because his representations were um, quite theatrical, and there were and there was just one at a time. Um, and as I, I said in the uh, the previous interview, what I wanted to show was much more subtlety, but actually to create that difference between the characters. So that was quite a difficult process to go through cinematically because I need to work on the accents and the slight difference in physicality um, but I think that, that, that I hope that I, that I achieved that um, and it was a process it was a process that was achieved through the rehearsals that we had mm -hmm. which we were lucky enough to have you know a number of rehearsals which is very unusual in, in filming filmmaking so yeah that was the process I went through who is your favorite version to play oh uh, right I, th I think it, it is dirty hand, but when he becomes upset, mm -hmm. so it's a kind of like a, a contradiction for the character, because yeah. yeah. that's when, yeah. when the character's really going on a journey, and that's what I like. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What, um, in Bradley, um, what, what inspires you as a director? What movies do you look to? What directors do you look to to inspire yourself when making your movies? Um, they're mostly old-time directors, so it would be people like uh, Wells, Hitchcock, Bergman. Um, you can see that. You can? You can see that a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, and I also like, um, I, I like technicians to aspire to excellence. So um, that's something I'm looking for as well, and I respect that. I like the artisanship of, of the old-style cinematographers, um, the camera operators, the focus pullers. So. That's where I'm seeking my inspiration. Um, but story-wise, all over the place, you know, Cuckoo's Nest, you know, you can go everywhere yeah, uh, yeah, in, course, in regards to stories. And, and Ninth Configuration is one of my, I don't know if you're aware of the Ninth Configuration, uh, Stacey Keach, Scott Wilson, it's a William oh, Peter Blatty movie. I like Stacey Keach. Yeah, it's a, it's a classy piece of work. Um, Yes, yeah, so inspiration from everywhere, like all of us. You can't help but get inspiration from everywhere. It, but if I can just go back to something you asked Julia earlier, mm -hmm. um, and it was very important to us as writers. Um, there's, there's so much negativity attached to mental illness in, in the film and television uh, industry. Not in the, as, in, as in what they produce, the, the movies and TVs. Mm -hmm. um, and it was important to us to show this not as, he, he's a serial killer, you know, that's not what it's about. This, this is um, much deeper than that, you know, and the character's much deeper than that. You, you really get that, and uh, you get that especially, I, d I don't want to do any spoilers or anything, I know the, the guys that were in there when we were doing the Q&A, they'd just seen the movie, but anybody watching this might not have seen it yet, and hopefully they will catch it. But you do get a sense of that at the end, when, when typing on the keyboard and everything like that, don't want to say too much. <laughs> But um, so, so I guess it was super duper important that you, you make sure you treat this right. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we did our research, Julia and I did our research, just as Miles did in regard to watching actors. We did our research in regard to someone, you know, dissociative identity disorder. So we, we didn't want to let that down. And, and it was very important to us to get that spot on. But what was more important, not more important, but as important, was to get the message across and, and hopefully, no spoilers again, uh, but hopefully um, the message is about loyalty, it's about unconditional love and, and it's, it's actually real core message it, is about in this cold indifferent universe there's love, compassion, empathy and, and that's unconditional and, and that's what it's about, you know, she, st she sticks with him, uh, <laughs> risking a spoiler there, I really went, almost went into it. So yeah, I won't say any more without, I don't want to spoil it.
When casting, how did you cast your two central characters, the, the lead and the, and the female lead as well? How did you go about casting them? Um, it's pretty simple, really, because... Um, nice my Well, my arm was up my back by Julia, because... <laughs> these, well, yeah, yeah. These two are, yeah, partners. Um, and I'd worked with Sam before, so... There was no casting whatsoever. I just, I knew Sam was great. I knew she would play that part perfectly. And, and we did have a little read through, but it was obvious that she would be able to pull that off because she's, she's got that ability to do that. She has the depth to do that. And I pretty much trusted Julia in regard to, I did check, his, some of his stuff is on YouTube, so you can check it out. So I did check him out. I don't know if he knows that, but <laughs> um, he was amazing. 17 years and not done acting to come and do that is absolutely stunning. And the setting, I believe the setting was here, right? In the in the shopping centre? Like, how did that come about? Like, obviously you're part of the festival and whatnot, but shooting up there must have been amazing. It's, it's a great set. Yeah, there's an old nightclub at the yeah. top of this mall. Um, it's been disused for, I think, something like 20, 20 plus years. Um, yeah, it's absolutely incredible set. But obviously we dressed it considerably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It took us a couple of days to dress it, actually. Um, and it looks horrendous in colour. Now, although that wasn't why we chose to go black and white, there are so, it's kind of like every colour imaginable up there. And it really wouldn't have worked. So, although that wasn't the main decision to, to show it in black and white, it certainly helped to make that. It decision. definitely helps. It definitely helps. It makes it look a bit more, um, dare I say, stylish. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we're, we're going to wrap it up a little bit now because um, we're, we're just getting on to talk about this and promote this this short movie, which I have to say, just again, it looks great on the big screen. I'm oh, really thank happy, you. I'm really you, happy Kevin. to be here this year because this is the first time I've got down here um, to see all these films, but to see yours up there is brilliant. Yeah. Okay, but where they can find you, where they can find your works and what's next? Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, well, you can find us on uh, all social media and the internet uh, as Redemption Pictures, so redemptionpictures.co.uk. Um, and we are shooting, as I mentioned briefly, uh, a short called Banish, and that's going to be... Not Abner. Uh, no, <laughs> no, or Abney and Teal, as Miles likes to call <laughs> No, but it's nothing to do with that. Um, yeah, Banish, we'll be shooting that in the summer. And um, we're really looking forward to it, and we hope that um, you know we'll be back here again with that one. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? And what happens with and I? Like, are you having a, a proper festival run and, and showing it in a few places, and then what happens with it after that? Give that back to Brad. <laughs> Um, we don't know. Uh, it's it's been submitted to nineteen festivals. Um, we don't start finding out until next month. Yeah. Um, so you know, don't want too many rejections. <laughs> this must be a weird one for for you right now, because obviously you've been part of the festival for this long, and then all of a sudden you're putting your own movie in, and now you're waiting to see if people select your movie. That must be a weird feeling. It is a weird feeling, and it's um, not a nice feeling, actually. Really? Um, it, it's, it's lovely putting it in here and seeing yeah. it on the big screen, but, yeah, I don't like waiting for that email, and it's horrible, because it comes through, and you don't know what it's going to say, and you right. have to open it, and it's a horrible feeling when they reject you. So now you're on the other side. Honestly, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed doing this with Bradley. I've been dying to do it all week, but I didn't want to show my enthusiasm too much. <laughs> I really, I just wanted to see it on the screen, the, the big screen, and see how good it looked up there, and it, and it does. So, uh, thanks for coming on, and I'll let you guys wrap out. Just, just say goodbye to the, the people watching. Yeah, thank you to uh, Kevin and Nerdly um, for supporting us and doing this interview, and thank you for your kind words. You're not going to hear many of them after this. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anybody want to ask anything? What? Anybody want to ask a question? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, we do, we do. This is where I go rogue. Um, I mean, you can hold the mic if you want. <laughs> Bradley, what was the meaning of the film? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, nice easy one. Um, well, the meaning of the film is to, it's, it's got multiple meanings actually. I won't go into too much depth, yeah. but hopefully Everyone that sees it kind of gets most of them, it's certainly the first one or two levels of it. So it's to not see mental health, uh, mental illness as, as a negative and, and 
I mean, the opening song, you know, It Had To Be You, is, it, it sums up also the essence of the movie, which is about staying with someone, even though they make you feel blue occasionally. You know, you're still going to stay with them because it's unconditional love. And that's the essence of the movie. It, it's about staying with someone, no matter what. And, and if they do have a mental illness, it's about us as a society not looking at people who have something like that, whatever it may be, depression or whatever, um, in a negative light and actually saying, you know what, we're there for you. We will be there for you. We'll continue to be there for you. So that's kind of the essence of the movie. Yeah, it's, Great question. It, it's about, it's about humanising something that until very recently was a mystery. And I think that is what is, is happening. There's a guy and he is lost. He's lost. He's lost in himself with these four characters and it is a reality because, you know, there's a spectrum of DID and some people are on it just very mildly and some people are more, on it more extreme. And <clears throat> unless people make films about it or documentaries, serious documentaries, then it won't be something that... Well, it will. It will be accepted as a condition that really, really affects people as we open our eyes to it. Thank you so much. We are going to go now and I've got a few more coming up. And, yeah, so we'll just say goodbye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kevin. That's great.